South Africa's home to the world's first heart transplant and is a leader in this field. But organ donors are in short supply and the numbers awaiting transplant are steadily increasing. In Soweto, a township with over three million people, kidney disease is a big killer, making organ donation a top priority for those working in Chris Hani Baragwanit's renal unit. You are at Dumsanim Zamani African Institute of Kidney Diseases. Is the renal department based at Chris Hani Baragwanit Hospital? We're coming into our chronic area. Here is the unit where our chronic patients come for dialysis. In 24 hours, we book about 52 patients on hemo. So we're overloaded. And then otherwise, patients are being worked up so that they can be transplanted. That's how we offload from the chronic side. Uh, how do you talk about donate? Oh, blood group manka. Blood group O. The dialysis program has a strict admission criteria because of insufficient funding and is increasingly overwhelmed by a growing population seeking treatment. Patients who are HIV positive cannot be on the program. Patients who are diabetic, we first have to run certain tests to see if the body function is okay for them to dialyze and that they are transplantable. Kina ko ga o dialyze ka? Over 10 years. Over 10 years. Okay. Every patient that comes here, it's not that they all fall into our program. Others go back home to die. Professor Ivor Katz, head of the department, often discusses cases with the patients himself. Sometimes the news isn't good. And didn't show that your kidneys are going to get better. So we're going to have to stop you on the machine today. In South Africa especially, there are three major diseases that have an impact on chronic kidney disease diabetes, hypertension, and HIV. And that triple threat really has had a major impact on people getting disease. But unfortunately, we are only able to offer a limited amount of treatment for people at the final end stage uh, renal disease process where they require dialysis or transplantation. Kidney disease um, is a chronic illness which requires a lot of support and understanding. It's very difficult to come four times a week for dialysis. Um, and then also, once you've got secure on dialysis, it's very frightening now to uh, contemplate being transplanted. Yeah, I think our big challenge in, in, the, in the public sector is that we, we share the list with the private sector. And the problem is that we rely on the private sector to supply um, kidneys we are unable currently because of lack of funding to secure organs. In the public sector you land up waiting much longer for a, a transplant. Uh, September only, only one year? Yeah. And the swelling was from I think patients don't recognize uh, what it means to even start dialysis. Sometimes people don't acknowledge that they have bad kidney disease um, and people especially in Africa seek support from uh, traditional healers and I think Having somebody like Matsia who understands the issues locally and the issues in the community, she's been able to bring her understanding of kidney disease and understanding of the community together. As part of her job, Matsia and her patients, some transplanted, others awaiting transplantation, educate others about kidney failure and organ donation. Today, they are going to talk to a group of traditional healers. We are invited by one of our patients, Mr. Japin Dumo. He's the chairman of the National Traditional Healers and Spiritual Organization there. So he felt that during their annual event, we must come and do organ donor awareness. The problem with organ donation, I would say it's a cultural problem whereby mostly black people, they do not donate. There are myths that surround the whole thing. Whoever wants an organ, it's evil. 
they don't think it as something that will be beneficial to the other person. So that is why we go out there to talk about organ donation. Dialysis. <laughs> Joyce attends every awareness outreach program with Matsia and helps get the word out about the shortage of organ donors in the country, as well as the benefits of dialysis. beautiful. <laughs> I am beautiful, and that's why I'm I'm fresh, I can stand on my one leg. Fresh, strong, healthy, fit. I'm so happy and thrilled, and uh, maybe it's because I like the vibe. I know we can preach and do whatever, but music brings energy into every person. They never knew that there are people living with kidney failure who are suffering this much, and for them to be healthy, they need to be transplanted. Today, Matsia might have dispelled a few myths around the issue of organ donation and hopes her message will filter further into the community. Joyce has been on dialysis for eight years. She dialyzes three times a week, each session lasting four hours. Ready for the treatment to start. Kidneys are playing the main role in your body because kidney is working hand in hand with the heart. Now my sister is going to inject me. Once she's inside the vein, I don't feel a pain anymore. When we clean the blood of the patients, we take out waste products here and water which is not wanted. Our lives depend on that machine. We call that machine our artificial kidney because our kidneys are no longer working. So once we don't go to the machine for a week or two, that's enough, we're gonna die. Joyce received a kidney several years ago, but it was rejected by her body. Unfortunately, my kidney got failed because of the rejection of my antibodies. When the kidney rejects, you go back to the theater to remove that rejected kidney to throw it away because it's no longer waking. Then they're going to sew you again there. Oh, it's painful, believe me. I'm back again at the waiting list. You're waiting for the thing that you don't know when you're gonna find it. But you have to persevere because perseverance is the mother to success.